Hey there Unmaskers, welcome back to my channel Unmask It Now. Thanks for tuning in today. In today's video, we'll review the replace root volume feature for Amazon EC2. Previously, if we had to replace the root volume of an EC2 instance, in the event of a root volume corruption or any OS issues, we needed to perform a bunch of steps, which included having to stop the instance, detach the root volume, create a new volume from the snapshot, then attach the new volume to the instance and start the instance back. Phew, that's a number of steps. With this new feature, you can now be relieved of these steps and with just a single click, your root volumes can now be restored to its original state or from a snapshot backup without having to stop the instance. The instance does undergo a short downtime while the volume swap operations are performed at the background. This downtime, however, is very minimal compared to the earlier process. You can now be rest assured that your instance store volumes data, the instance network configuration, for example, if you have a public IP attached to the instance, and your IN configuration will remain intact. Enough with the details. Let's switch over to the console to see this in action. Switching over to the AWS console, I've already launched a Windows Server EC2 instance. The instance type is M5D. With the M5D instance type, we see that we get 75 GB of NVMe SSD as an instance store volume. The reason I'm using an instance type with an instance store volume is just to show that the data within the instance store volume will remain intact even after the root replacement task is complete. Let's also make a note of the public IP of the instance. You can see that it's 13.236.87.49. We should see that the public IP address should remain the same even after the root volume replacement task. With the previous process, we would required to stop the instance. So the public IP address changes when the instance is started back. But with this new feature, you can be rest assured that your public IP address will remain the same. So I've already logged into the instance. I'm going to open my file explorer and currently I only have my C drive, which is, which is my 30 GB of root volume. Like I said, this instance type needs to come with an instance store volume. So let's go to the disk management. You can see that I do have instance store volume in here. I'm going to just partition this disk. So I'm just going to select GPT and then I'm going to create a new simple volume. Assign it a drive letter. Just give it a name as data volume and do a quick format. You can now see that we've got our data drive in place here. This data drive here is an instance store volume. If you had to stop and start the instance, the data and in the instance store volume will be lost. But as part of the replace root volume task, since we are not stopping the instance, we'll notice that the data and in the instance store volume will remain intact. So let me go ahead and create a folder. I'm going to name it instance store volume and then just create a simple file called as instance store volume file and let's do the same within the root volume. I'm just going to create a new folder called as stem and then create a file called as temp.txt and let's add some data in this file. So I'm going to say this is a temp file. And I'm going to add some data in here too. This is an instance store volume file. Now that we've created data in both these drives, please note that when we take a snapshot, the snapshot is only taken for an EBS volume and not for an instance store volume. So let's switch over to the AWS console and create a snapshot of the root volume. So let me select the instance, switch to the storage tab. Note that you can only see the EBS volume ID here. So I'm going to select this volume, go to actions, and create a snapshot. So I'm going to call this snapshot as backup of root volume. Now that we've created a backup of the root volume, let's simulate a file deletion operation. And then we will use this backup to restore that file. So switching back to the EC2 instance, 
I'm going to navigate to my C drive temp folder and pretend that I accidentally deleted this file. Let's assume you can't restore that from the recycle bin and we want to use the EBS volume to restore this file from the snapshot. Now that we are in the EC2 instance console instances tab, I'm going to select the instance. You can click on the replace root volume task from two locations. Selecting the instance, you can go to the storage tab and you'll notice the replace root volume icon here. Alternatively, you can select the instance, click on actions, monitor and troubleshoot, and then click on the replace root volume task. So let's click on this option. You do have options to replace the root volume back to its original launch state. You do have the option to restore it from the snapshot as well as restore it from a different AMI. So in this case, I'm going to select a snapshot and select the snapshot that we created previously. You also do have the option if you want to delete the original root volume as well. So you can see that our original root volume ends with 17B7. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create replacement task. I'm going to select the instance. Click on the storage tab and you can see that there is a replace root volume task that is currently in the pending state. So let's give it a couple of minutes. And while that's happening, let me switch over to the volume tab and click on a refresh. And you can see that this was our original root volume. And now this is replaced with this root volume that was created from the snapshot. You can see that our session has been temporarily disconnected. This is where I was talking about that you're going to notice a slight downtime while the replace root volume tasks are happening at the background. You can now see that the new volume that was created 7EE6 is now in the in use state and it is attached to our instance. We can also verify that from the instances tab. Selecting the instance and going to the storage volume, you can now see that the root volume is 37E6 and our recent root volume replacement task has reported successful. So since our RDP session is disconnected, let me go back and connect to the session. And I'm instantly connected back to the session now that the root volume task is completed. Let me click on the C drive. We can see the temp folder and we've successfully replaced the temp.txt file from the snapshot. Switching back to the instance store volume, you can see that the data in the instance store volume has also remained intact. Last but not the least, we can also notice that the public IP of the instance has not changed. So this completes the replace root volume task. And we did all of this without having to stop the instance. I hope this helps and you will give this feature a try in your own environments. Thanks for watching. For more such content, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Unmask It Now. See you next time.